One thing I do want to talk about is the role of trust. So this is my third bullet point. A lot of our moral emotions are extended um, to people we trust. So um, the, the extent of our trust and the extent of our sympathy are pretty closely tied together. Um, trust is an important, well, I think people in today's culture underestimate the importance of trust for social functioning. And part of this is, uh, gets highlighted by the sociologist Robert Putnam. Robert Putnam wrote a book called Bowling Alone. He wrote it in the 90s. Um, uh, he uh, noted that bowling was more popular than ever. More bowling alleys, more money being spent on bowling. But bowling leagues had almost completely gone away. There was no local bowling league anymore, not that often. So that's the, the origin of the title, right? People seem to be bowling alone. Um, and this was meant to uh, be an example of the decline of certain kinds of social institutions um, that go past the family that aren't the government, right? Uh, informal, um, homegrown social institutions. Well, one of the things he does in that book is he talks about thick trust and thin trust. And so these are two ideas that get highlighted in your text. Um, do people read this part of it? Yeah. Um, oh, let me, let me hand this out while this, not everyone has signed this. Um, So, how can, how, who can explain the difference between thick and thin trust? You want to go for it? It has to do with. Um, Ex con connections beyond your immediate peers, and it, you know, family here's a, f a fairly loose term, right? It could, it doesn't have to be your your your, your father's knows best family. It could be any sort of, you know, cl the people that you're closest to, right? So, yeah, uh, you said that you look for the best, or you assume the best in the people. Right. Well, um, Putnam claims that we all engage in both thick and thin trust all the time. So it's not a question of a thick person versus a thin person, right? Um, it's, it's sort of two different actions that the same person would do. Now, but what goes on when you extend to, say, a total stranger, whatever this assumption is, the, the best? I'm not even sure that the best is the right word there. That's common courtesy. Hmm? Common courtesy? Say more. Oh wait, let's let's go over here. What do you what do you have? Yeah, actually I think I think the highways are an excellent place. Um, I, may, I may have already talked about this in this class. Um, I can't remember. But the highways are an excellent place to see thin trust illustrated because um, there's a lot at stake, right? You can die. Um, and yet we, we, we count on each other um, to cooperate a little bit, right? Um, another, a couple other standard examples. Uh, once again this morning, I could, I'll be able to use this example for at least another five or six years. Um, I put my child on a big yellow bus. Off you go. 
<laughs> so, ask me the bus driver's name. I don't know. Do I... I trust that the bus driver is not high. Right? I trust that the bus driver is not going to sell my children for medical experimentation. <laughs> the things that I trust the bus driver not to do are typically things that are, come so naturally to you, it's kind of funny for me to mention them, right? Um, this thin trust doesn't cover everything. Part of what makes it thin is that it covers fewer things, but it extends farther, right? You can imagine, I don't know, imagine like goop. Trust is goop. And you can have a pile of it that's just, just over you and your family where you can spread it out farther. And we all spread it out a little bit. Um, and we do this every time we trust someone to be to behave conventionally in conventional situations, right? Um, every time you get change from a, uh, a store clerk and you don't count it, you have um, extended a little bit of thin trust. Thin trust is important for the functioning of society. This is Putnam's point. Um, we saw Putnam earlier in the book, by the way. Um, do, do, do people remember where he came up before? Mm. He's in the introduction. Uh, in the introduction, as a sort of a, a hook, Lishka talks about the idea that morals are in decline. Um, and he quotes a couple people on this. But one of them, one of the more interesting thinkers he does quote on this is um, Putnam. Because um, Putnam thinks that trust is on the decline in our society and that this is a problem. With the failure to trust um, people in ordinary situations um, is a drag on society. Um, and, and, and it can ultimately bring a society down. Um, and at this point, Lishka goes and he talks about, um, uh, where is it? It's a, there is a society that was uh, an African group profiled by an anthropologist. Oh, maybe it's at the end of the introduction. Um, but uh, the, the society becomes obsessed with witchcraft and the belief that everything that happens that goes wrong is the product of someone in the society casting a hex, right? And so all of the efforts, here it is, the sorcerers of Dubu, Dobu, this is uh, page six. Mistrust even among the closest of relatives develop and there's a plague of vindictive behavior. Similar thing happens in um, Sicily with the mafia. A society impoverished in every way by lack of trust and general norms of reciprocity um, just collapses, right? Um, And you can, I mean, Putnam is back, has been back on the radio recently um, because talking about um, gun violence, right? And it's not, he's not particularly like taking a stand on the Second Amendment. He's just pointing out that this, the feeling that we have that we need to be constantly armed and vigilant against each other is a part of this decline of trust. Okay, so I've got a little exercise that is associated with this. Um, it, it's based on my theory that um, people rely on thick and thin trust more than they realize. So what I want you to do is just list everyone you have trusted in the last 24 hours. Um, and 
attempt to, to divide this up into thick and thin trust. And the goal of this exercise is um, to get you to think about what social networks you're embedded in um, and how they work, right? And again, just you know, put your name on this. I'll collect it, and uh, once I see that you've written something down that's relevant, I will give you uh, 100 points. It'll just take like three minutes to do this. Thick trust. Well, all right. Let me let me get this straight. Thick trust is extended to your intimates, and it covers more things. So I have thicker trust for my babysitter than I do the bus driver, and then I, I have even thicker trust than that for my wife. Right? Um, it covers more aspects of how what I think about when I think about child rearing. Right? So thick trust covers more things, but it doesn't go as far. All right. So any, anyone want to share some examples? The thin trust ones are fun to share because they are uh, uh, often things that other people will have done too. Yeah. Not fail not invest your money in, um, say, housing derivatives. That one might not be good, actually. Yeah. Oh, oh dear. Did something... <laughs> Is everyone okay? That's an interesting one because that's a case where trust is actually, um, I mean, there's, there's implicit trust um, and then there's the trust that, get, that comes with a lot of verification, right? Um, and so, I mean, medical practice is heavily litigated, right? Um, and so in some ways that trust is less robust because... Uh, you feel the need to, ha you, you, you know you've got a mechanism to, to fall back on um, if, 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 if things go really wrong. But still, there's a lot of trust extended there. There's a lot that's on the line. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be thin, right? Thin, yeah. I mean, uh, quick rule, if you don't know their name, it's thin trust. <laughs> or if you read it off a name tag, yeah. Um, actually, I, what, the way I've been phrasing it, it, if you stop trusting them, it stops being trust at all, okay. right? Um, and uh, all of these things come in degrees. This is not an exact science here, right? Um, but yeah, if, the more you have to police, the less you're trusting, right? Um, the less you're relying on their internalization of their basic social roles. It's important, I think, to, to note the, 
the the role of institutions here, right, and institutional roles. A lot of times when we extend trust to people, it is in their role as someone who has this job, bus driver, um, daycare worker, healthcare worker, right? Um, and so, I mean, this is another theme that Putnam is worried about. Um, the decline in trust in institutions and the decline of loyalty to, uh, uh, of individuals to their institutions, right? Everyone changes jobs now, you change careers. You don't, if you're not as identified with your status as, say, a healthcare worker, you're going to be less likely to um, honor that, the, the, the rules that come with that role. And for instance, wash your hands thoroughly, that sort of thing. Um, and there's a, there's a vicious cycle here that comes with both uh, uh, a decline in trust and a decline in trustworthiness. Among other things, if you don't trust other people, you are less likely to behave in a trustworthy manner yourself because you think, well, of course I'm going to steal from the till. Everyone else is, right? 